Hey, my name is Vindimus. In today's video, we're going to learn how to add a box shadow to a card like element. If you want to follow along, link will be in the description down below. Let's begin. The box shadow property applies one or more shadows to an element. The box shadow property takes values for offset X or how far to push the shadow horizontally from the element offset Y how far to push the shadow vertically from the element blur radius spread radius and color in that order the blur radius and spread radius values are optional it's these two multiple box shadows can be created by using commas to separate properties of each box shadow element. Here's an example of the CSS to create multiple shadows with some blur at mostly transparent black colors. And then they have a box shadow with <clears throat> excuse me 0 10 20 for the pixels, the RGBA color and transparency let's see and then comma is a whole another shadow there the element has an ID of thumbnail with this selector use the example CSS values above to place a box shadow on the card so let's go look at the uh, thumbnail looking for it here thumbnail I'm a little bit confused your code should add a box shadow property for the thumbnail ID <coughs> excuse me thumbnail ID guessing here's thumbnail here so let's see add a box shadow property for the thumbnail ID hmm. okay so we need to find thumbnail if there's not one then we're just gonna create it so I'm just gonna create it here after card text. Why not? So card text. Hmm. See it here. Well, card text. Yeah, it's right here. That's this class here. So that's a class, and then thumbnail is an ID. Is there a specific way to declare an ID? I, I do remember there being a lesson on that. I just don't remember what it was about. And I don't have the luxury of, you know, cheating. So I think ID was a hash, if I, if I recall. I could be mistaken on that. We'll, we'll try it. Thumbnail. And then you're going to do curly. And then... They want a box shadow. Box dash shadow. And then they want us just to use the code that's already up there. So, I mean, you really don't need to code. You just copy this code here since that's what they want us to use. Control C. They want us to use it. So, we'll put it in there. And did anything change? box shadow you should use the given CSS for the box shadow value so we need to do an ID if you're mistaken this might need to be a period instead let's try that did that change anything maybe nothing at all that didn't change anything either period no hash you know what it has to match exactly to 
This is where I'm tinkering around. Okay. Huh. Thumbnail. Thumbnail. I do equals thumbnail. And then the only other thing I could think of instead of going up there is that you would just come down here. Just uh, man, I'm so confused. I didn't do anything either. <laughs> so I'm lost. <laughs> I am lost. Okay, we're gonna have to go to the help section for this one. Jeez, that's a toughie. Free code camp. You stumped me, man. Okay, so we'll get some help and get a hint, cause jeez. I have no clue. Add a box shadow to a card like element. Hmm. Problem explanation. The box property attaches one or more shadows to an element. Yes. H offset required. The horizontal offset of the shadow. Okay, we kind of get that. V offset required. Okay, I mean, that's just basically like rewording. Is there not anything? <laughs> Pause. Okay, you guys are confusing me. Wow. So I'm going to have to go to the video. Wow, this is the first time I had to go to a video. Um, let me make sure that I have my headphones. Jeez, oh man. I'm going to pause the recording for a second here. Okay, so we got the video hooked up with headphones. And we're going to... We're going to play this. The box shadow property applies one or more shadows to an element. So this is the box shadow property, and it's kind of like a drop shadow. So each number represents something else. So the first number is the offset X, and that's how far to push the shadow horizontally from the element. And then the second number, offset Y, how far to push the shadow vertically. And then we have the blur radius, the spread radius, and then the color. Now, most of these are optional if you just wanna keep the default value. You can also do a comma separator. So if you had a comma here, you can add an entirely new box shadow. So for this challenge, I'm about to show you how to do this challenge here. And what we're gonna do. Whoa, hold up. Before they, they spoil it for us, let's try one more time. I don't like being spoiled here. I don't see thumbnail anywhere, dude. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a thumbnail, just real quick. Dot. Thumbnail. Box dash. Shadow. Oh, you know what? Yeah, okay. We'll copy and paste this again. Yeah, and there's a comma here separating it. We have this at the end. I wonder why this isn't turning blue though. Let me see if I can go real quick to ID CSS. Huh. Let me let me see if I can figure this out here. It was in the CSS and there was like an ID one I remember doing. See if we can find the ID. Set the ID of an element. ID attributes should be unique. There are several benefits to using ID attributes. 
You can use an ID to style a single element and later you'll learn that you can use them to select and modify specific elements within JavaScript. ID attributes should be unique. Browser won't enforce this, but it's widely agreed upon the best practice, so please don't give more than one element the same ID attribute. Here's an example. Give your H2 element the ID of cat photo app. So down in the H2, you would go here and you would put the ID in here. So you put ID equals cat photo app, right? So we, we know about that dash photo app which we have thumbnail but then how do you modify that so it says okay maybe it's the next lesson after this one then add ID attribute Yeah, see here it is. One cool thing about ID attributes is that like classes you can style them. ID is not reusable and should only be applied to one element. It has a higher specificity, I remember that. Here's how you can give it the background color. In your style element you put hash. You always reference IDs by putting a hash in front of their names. So in the style, you would put hash cat dash photo dash element. Do that. background color green okay it just stays white I guess and where's the cat photo app down here where's the ID at ID equals cat photo form. So, oops, this is supposed to say cat photo form. I don't see any other IDs anywhere. There's just one here. And it's on the cat photo. Okay. Your form element should have the background color of green. Let's see, I am like totally lost. Your form, cat photo form, background color of green, hashtag cat photo form. There one too many of those, huh? No. I gotta get a hint because I'm lost. 
cat photo form, background color green, and then go down to the form and element, ID, cat photo form. Isn't that what I've done? Cat photo form, background color green, and in the form input the ID. equals cat photo form huh let's maybe try to put it in the front see if that changes anything no. yeah form element background color green huh I'm lost it shouldn't say element it should say form cat photo form cat photo element yeah, that doesn't make sense. Huh. Oof. This is honestly the first time I have been stumped. But I just really don't want... And this doesn't make sense because I already finished this one. You always reference classes by putting a period in front of their names. You can always reference IDs by putting a hash in front of their names. Okay. Done. Try giving your form, which now has the ID attribute of cat photo form, a green background. Just looking through everything. Form ID, cat photo form. Hmm. Stumped. Your form element should have the background color of green. Your form element should have an ID attribute. You should not give your form any class or style attributes. Background. So I only think I probably misspelled something. That's the only thing I could think of. This is supposed to be like that, I guess. So it's over too much, no? Background dash color. It's always something like what am I missing here? Huh. Hmm. Bah. My mouse always falls like that. Stomped. Okay, background form. We're gonna delete that. Now run it, see what's up. It's still running. Silver so background. P style. Background color. Border color. C 
silver background. Glass silver background. There's glasses. Really makes you think. You know what? Let me um let me just go from the beginning here. Cat photo dash one. That's weird. When I do it up here it's blue, but when I did it down there it was white. That tells me it wasn't reading it. Background dash color green. Now it works. So I guess my understanding of it is that it has to be on top. And if you do it down down here, it won't work, which is bizarre. But that's sometimes how compilers will read will read these things. So Understanding that, I would say let's take it back. Let's take it back to the original problem. And the original problem was that we were trying to declare a box shadow for the thumbnail ID. Okay? If you guys remember, it's been a while. So we have this thumbnail ID here, it's already declared. And so <clears throat> we have to make a thumbnail ID declaration with a hash inside the style tag. So if you remember up here, we'll go after the curly brace. This is cool that we understand it. I know it took a while. You put a hash and you put thumbnail. See, now it's blue where before it was white and I don't know why. Maybe it's just my internet browser refreshing. And we're doing a box dash shadow. And that's gonna need to be the same as this here. Copy it, paste it. Now you can see the box shadow all around that. And when you run the test, it will pass. That's nuts. But let's finish the video up. Try to figure out what we did. I'm wrong. a separator. So if you had a comma here, you can add an entire element here. So you can see this ID. And Spoiler. what we're going to do is style the element here. So you can see this ID has been added, ID of thumbnail. And instead of example here, I'm going to select the ID of thumbnail. And it's going to use this hash mark instead of the dot. And we're just going to copy and paste because right in the challenge, it has the box shadow we're supposed to use. And if you see this, we have two box shadows. There's this box shadow, and then there's the second box shadow. So if we look on the page here, we should be able to see the box shadows. And you can see they're now added to the card. And now we won't need this comment anymore. So let me take off this comment right here. And that should solve the challenge. Yeah, I mean, theoretically it should solve the challenge, but what do you do in real life when this turns white? So like I said, I mean, we came in here before. Maybe, oh, you know what I think it was? I think I was inside of another, I accidentally went inside of the card text. That could be what I did wrong. So yikes, that's uh, maybe it's a common mistake. I'm not sure. You're trying to go inside the style tags. I mean, I know that everyone should know that by now. And I guess it just happened to not work because I didn't see it okay so I guess sometimes that happens so <laughs> for the ID we'll put hash thumbnail <laughs> if you see it's not turning blue you know you're doing something wrong <laughs> oh my goodness box dash and then I mean you could do that or you can just copy like he did the whole thing which 
we're gonna do again very thoroughly this is gonna be the longest video ever and that that's your challenge for some reason it was very challenging I'm gonna have to go back and look at the footage <laughs> oh my goodness all right <laughs> that was this challenge hopefully not every challenge takes 30 minutes <laughs> I'll see you on the next one guys <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you feel this video is helpful or you liked it, then click the like button. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. I am Finimus, and I will see you later. Have a good day, everybody.